Hey guys, my name is Matt Johnson and today I want to share with you how to export Facebook page cover videos using Adobe Premiere Pro. And this is actually the fourth video in kind of a series that I've been making all about my export settings. So I have other videos, namely about how to export 4K and how to export 1080p and how to export videos for Instagram. So if you watch this one and you were intrigued by it and you said, man, I learned a lot, maybe you would like to watch some of these other videos too, which I will link to up in the corner and down in the description if you want to check them out. That said, let's jump right into the tutorial. All right, guys, welcome to Facebook. And I'm sure you're like, Matt, you said you were gonna talk about Premiere. Why are we in Facebook? Because Facebook is where we're gonna be uploading this cover video. And I want to talk to you about the recommended settings that Facebook has for cover videos. These are Facebook's recommended cover video settings. Namely, your video needs to be within 20 to 90 seconds in length. And at minimum, your video should be 820 by 312 pixels with a recommended size of 820 by 462. Now, why are they recommending 820 by 312 pixels? That is such a weird resolution. Well, that is because 820 by 312 pixels is actually the resolution of your cover video. So in a perfect world, you would be making videos that match that resolution so it fits perfectly. But that is a weird resolution because people are not normally making videos at 820 by 312 pixels. Facebook has a workaround, namely their recommended size of 820 by 462 pixels. This resolution is actually very, very similar to 16 by nine. So if you have an HD video or a 4K video, as long as it is widescreen at a normal resolution, 1920 by 1080, 3840 by 2160, by recommending that you export your videos at a size of 820 by 462 pixels, Facebook is attempting to keep you from having to do any sort of drastic cutting off the top and bottom of your video to fit into the cover video section here. The issue with that is that you are going to be cutting off parts of your video regardless and that can be an issue which I'm going to show you now. This video that I just uploaded is an 820 by 462 resolution video, the resolution that Facebook recommends. So you're thinking, Matt, that looks good. I think that's fine. Now you notice here it says drag to reposition and so I'm going to click here and I'm going to start to drag and you're actually going to see here that there is a ton of video that is actually hidden. So I've got things up top, things at the bottom, and it's really kind of hard sometimes to really fine tune exactly what I want to be in frame because maybe I have it down here at the bottom and that looks good for some frames here, but then I have this shot here and I'm like, man, I really wish that was further down so I could see more of the sky. So as you can see here, the issue is that I need to drag the video to make it fit into the frame in the position that I want. But because the video is made up of multiple clips, I cannot keyframe it and say, okay, be this high for this clip, be this high for this clip, be this high for this clip. I ideally need a video that I've already made that is exactly 820 by 312 resolution that will fit perfectly into this window, which is what I'm going to be showing you how to do now in Adobe Premiere Pro. Welcome to Adobe Premiere Pro. And I'm going to go up here to the about page so you can see that I'm running version 2017.1.2. So if this looks slightly different to you, maybe because you have a different version, but this should work for pretty much any version of Adobe Premiere Pro CC. So don't freak out if you don't have the same version. Now, if you look over here, I have actually already gone to the trouble of importing some video clips from my trip to Iceland. All these clips are at 24 frames per second and are at either 1920 by 1080 or 3840 by 2160. Just something to keep in mind, regardless of which resolution you have filmed your videos in, you can make them work for this, but I want you to be aware because I'm gonna be changing some scalings depending on what type of video clip I'm using. With all that in mind, we're gonna go down here to the new item button and we're gonna click new sequence. Alternatively, you can hit control in or command in. Any way you do it, it's gonna bring up this lovely little window right here, which is our new sequence window. And as you can see, there are a ton of sequence presets. We're gonna select digital SLR, 1080p, DSLR 1080p 24. And you're like, Matt, I did not shoot with DSLR. I did not shoot at this resolution. I did not shoot at this frame rate. Why are you making me do this? Because we're about to customize this thing. Do not worry. Let's go up here to settings. Editing mode, DSLR, time-based, 23.976 frames per second, because like I said, everything that I shot was at 24 frames per second. Now down here at frame sizes, we're gonna have to make some changes because Facebook cover videos are a different resolution than 1920 by 1080. Namely, we want our video to perfectly fit into the cover video size. So we're gonna set the horizontal to 820, and we're gonna set the vertical pixels to 312, which is the minimum that Facebook allows for cover videos. And you're gonna notice here that is gonna make a really, really weird ratio, namely 205 by 78, which 
I've never seen before this, but hey, that's what Facebook does. All these other settings here, you do not need to mess with, but you can go down here to save preset and you can call this Facebook cover video 820 by 312. And if you click okay, as you see, I already have one, so I'm just gonna overwrite it. But if you click okay on yours, it's not gonna be there. And that's gonna refresh your sequence presets. And now you have this as a custom preset. So anytime you need it, you can go down here to custom preset, select Facebook cover video, and then you can make a new sequence without needing to go through all of the hassle of typing in the settings again. So let's name our sequence here, Iceland cover video. That sounds good. Did I spell that right? Yes, I did. Okay, good. We're gonna click okay, and that's gonna make a new sequence. And now we have a timeline down here, so cool. Let's drag this over so this all kind of fits. Now let's start importing some clips. So we're gonna go over here to our DJI 001 video clip, and that looks so cool. It's the cliffs, it's the clouds, I love it. So I'm gonna select the clip and I'm gonna drag it down here to the timeline. And whenever I do that, we get a clip mismatch warning saying it does not match the sequence's settings because this clip is currently 3840 by 2160 and our sequence is currently set to 820 by 312, which is definitely smaller than 4K. But we're not gonna click change sequence settings because that's gonna bring the sequence back up to 4K. We want to keep existing settings. And what that is gonna do is if I scroll over my clip here, actually it fits, but it's kinda like weirdly stretched. There's some black bars, things are looking weird. Because Premiere by default, if you zoom in here on the timeline so we can actually see the clip, if you right click on the clip, you can see that Premiere actually has a setting called scale to frame size, which means that regardless of the resolution of your video, it's gonna try to fit it into the frame that you have given it. Namely, it's trying to squeeze this 4K video down to 820 by 312, so that's tiny. And so that's why we're getting the black bars. If I uncheck this box here, whoa, suddenly there is some way too detailed views of the mountain and you start to see where the Mavic codec is not as detailed as you wish it would be because that's looking pretty ridiculous. If we hit play on this, it's just like, what am I, what am I looking at? Is that a little bird? What is that? I, I see a little bird. To fix that, we need to now change the scale of our video clips so that it fits properly. So we're gonna go up here to effect controls up here in the top left. And because our clip is selected, we have effect controls here. So as you can see, we have motion, position, scale. Scale is the one that we really wanna focus on right now. Namely, we need to start bringing the scale down from 100 down, 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 down. This is actually changing the percentage of the size. So now it's 27% of the size, 25% of the size. Once I start getting down to like 14, we're getting bars everywhere. So let's start bringing that back up to about, I find that for 4K footage, 22 works really well. If you are using 1080p footage, you may need to change the scaling to 44, I believe. As long as you're not getting black bars on the side of your video, then you are good. So 22 here looks great. But as you can see, the video itself is actually very thin vertically. There's not a lot. It's very wide horizontally, but very thin vertically because it matches the Facebook cover video size. And so if I go up here to position, the left numbers are my horizontal controls, which lets me shift where the video is if I want it to be off-centered but we're gonna leave that as it is at 410. The 156 here is actually the height of the video. And so you notice here that I actually have a ton of video left depending on how I want to change the height of it. So let's go over here to set it to about 190, I would say looks good. So that way, whenever I click play on it, we're getting the cliffs, we're able to see the top of the cliffs here, and I think that that looks pretty good. That is a good size of video. Now through the magic of video editing, I'm gonna go ahead and make some music and make a whole little timeline here of all the other video clips right now. And as you can see here, I now have a nice little timeline set up of different video clips. The clips have been graded, there's some music added, things are looking pretty cool here. Man, those cliffs are looking great. And they are the proper height, I really like how they are visible at the top and you still get some detail down at the bottom. Now let's go through the rest of these clips here and as you can see, I've already reframed them so they're looking really good and they fit into the frame properly. The one I wanna focus on is the last one here of my wife, Rachel. Her in Iceland looking super awesome with her hair flowing in the wind. Such a cool clip, I love this clip. 
And you'll notice here that this clip is actually at 1920 by 1080. And the way you can tell is because I only had to scale it down to 44. Unlike 4K, I did not have nearly as much room to play with. So once I start scaling it down and try to put it down to 22, like the 4K was, that is a tiny clip. So that doesn't really work. So by keeping it up at 44, it fits properly. And I've gone through and reframed it here. So I'm getting almost to the top of her head, but you're getting most of the face and you're getting the water, which I think looks really, really great. And as you can see here, this video is ready to be exported. So we're gonna go over here to the beginning of the clip and we're gonna press I, we're gonna go to the end and we're gonna press O, make sure that all fits there properly. And so now Premiere knows where the beginning and end of our video is that we want to render. And so we're gonna go over here and press Control M, or you can go up to File, Export, Media, and that's gonna bring up the Export Settings dialog box. Our old friend, look at this, so many settings here. Now you notice here that for format, I want to choose H.264 and for preset, I've already actually made a preset for Facebook cover videos, but let's pretend that I did not do that so I can walk you through it. So let's go down here. Honestly, at this point, you can literally select any preset that you want. It does not matter because we're going to fully customize it. In our case, let's do YouTube 1080p HD preset. And that's going to bring up all the preset settings that we would use if we were going to be exporting for YouTube at 1080p but we're gonna customize these. So make sure export video and export audio is checked. Go down here to the video tab and you're gonna notice all of the really complicated settings here. Let's make this bigger so we can actually see everything. That looks cool. And as you can see here under basic video settings, it's currently set to 1920 by 1080, which is not what we want. So make sure first of all, that the little chain here is deselected. So it has a little slash through it because otherwise anytime you change the width, it's gonna change the height. So we're gonna change the width to 820 and we're gonna change the height. Whoa, look at it there, see, isn't that crazy? We're gonna change the height to 312, which is now perfectly gonna make the video fit without any black bars. Next, we're gonna go down here, make sure all these boxes are unchecked in case we need to change them. Frame rate, 23.976, which matches up. Anytime you're concerned, go up here and check your sequence settings to make sure that everything matches whenever you're exporting. Namely, frame rate, 24 frames per second. Progressive is good. Aspect, 1.0 square pixels. NTSC, profile high, level 4.2 is fine for what we're gonna be doing. That is plenty of power for us to be exporting a Facebook cover video. Next, let's make sure render at maximum depth is checked and we're gonna go to our bitrate settings. And this is the point where I'm gonna plug my 4K export settings video where I go into super detail about bitrate encoding, target bit rates, maximum bit rates, why you should be choosing them, the benefits, pros and cons of VBR versus CBR. So many factoids, I will link to that up in the corner and down in the description for you to check out because it is very detailed and hard for me to cover just in this video. I do not wanna go into it right now. So. We're gonna skip all of the why, and I'm just gonna say use CBR and set your target bit rate to 25 megabits per second. I'm sure you're thinking, Matt, that's a little high. This video is very tiny, but if you watch my 4K export settings video, you'll understand why. All that considered, let's make sure that use maximum render quality is checked, and let's go up to audio. Audio format AAC, audio codec AAC, sample rate 48,000 hertz, which is the same audio hertz that I recorded my video in. Channels are stereo, audio quality, of course, high. Set your bit rate to the maximum 320 and give a precedence to bit rate. That is all the settings that you need to know. Once you click Q or export, you click Q, it's gonna bring up Adobe Media Encoder and then you can press play, the little green button to render your video or you can press export. In our case, so we have one more thing to do and that is that we need to go up here and you notice that it says preset custom and we need to save this preset so that way you're not having to go through and like individually type in all your settings every single time. We can save a preset. So let's go over to save preset and whenever we click save, it says copy of YouTube 1080p HD. That's not what we want it to say. Let's make this Facebook cover video 820 by 312. And let's say it's 23.976 FPS and 25 Mbps CBR. That way we know what we're using the video for, the resolution, the frame rate, and the bit rate, which is pretty much all you need to know whenever you're selecting a preset for your videos. We're gonna click OK, and now our preset is saved, and we are now ready to export our video. The video is now exported, and we are now ready to upload our Facebook video cover. So we're gonna go up here to change cover, upload video. We're gonna to navigate to our rendering, which is, in this case, the Facebook cover video, 820 by 312, and we're gonna click Open. 
it's gonna stop uploading our video now. Our video is now uploaded, and you notice it says drag to reposition up here, but whenever I click and drag, it doesn't do anything because our video is perfectly the size, the exact minimum that Facebook recommends, 820 by 312 resolution. So it fits perfectly. There's no worry about having to then resize it in Facebook to make sure the framing is right. Don't have to worry about any of that because your video is now ready to go. Now, whenever you click next here, Facebook is gonna give you 10 pre-made thumbnails that they have chosen from your video for you to choose from. You get a lot of options here, it works pretty well. Unfortunately, you cannot set your own custom thumbnail. It would be so ideal if you could just upload a thumbnail and then have that work because there are still platforms that do not support these videos. So the issue that you could run into is that if one of these thumbnails doesn't work properly, you're gonna be like, well, that sucks. Now I have a pretty video, but the thumbnail sucks. Especially if somebody's on mobile or something like that and their phone does not support the video function. So something to consider whenever you're uploading your video is that the first thumbnail that Facebook gives you is always the first frame of your video. So if you are concerned about not having your thumbnail work perfectly, maybe make the first shot of your video something that will look good as a still image. This is the first shot of my video and I think this looks really great as a still, so all I have to do is hit publish and if people don't have video, they see pretty cliffs. If they have video, then the video will play and I think that works really well. Very last thing to consider too, make sure that you're automatically replaying your video in a loop so if somebody's on your page, it's just still playing in the background because motion and video is pretty and it should always be playing in my opinion. Let's go on ahead here and click publish. I did just make this live on my Facebook page for you guys. I hope you're happy about that. Oh, oh, oh yeah, it's looking good. All right, cool, see his plan? Okay, awesome. I'm really, really happy with how that looks. And we're done. That's about it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video has been helpful to you and giving you some great insight into how to export Facebook page cover videos for any of your business pages or any other page that you happen to be using. Hopefully they will roll this out to actual profiles. That'd be super cool in the future. But for now, as the time of making this video, they haven't done that yet. But I hope they do that soon and this video helps you in that way too. As always, if you have any questions or comments or anything else, please feel free to leave one below or get in touch with me through my website, whoismat.com. It is also a huge, like massive help to me if you would consider liking this video and subscribing if you wanna see more videos like this in the future. I don't have a ton of other export settings videos planned. Like I said at the start of the video, I've already made a lot, but if there is a site that you're like, Matt, I need to know how to export and make my video look the best that it possibly can, please leave me a comment letting me know that site. I'll check it out and look into making a tutorial video for it. Unrelated, but kind of related, I also post a ton of behind the scenes photos and videos to my Instagram page at instagram.com slash who is Matt. And I also have a Facebook page where I post a lot of news, which you can check out. I will link to it in the description of this video. Last two things, I'm also offering one-on-one -on -one filmmaker consulting. So if you have questions about export settings, like in this video, if you have questions about literally any other aspect of filmmaking, I would absolutely love to book a consulting session with you and talk to you. You can sign up for that at whoismat.com slash consulting. And very last thing here, if you want to check out my wedding film production company, which is the way that I pay the bills here, it is filmstrongproductions at filmstrong.com. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.